Assalamu alaikum students welcome to your course TATFL so very warm welcome to all of you good morning and assalamu alaikum today we are going to start yes restart the last lecture yes we talked about reading skill fine how did you find reading and how did you find speaking did you practice those who are, of you who are practicing teachers yes all right so I mean I, I can see your the feedback that you people are really really uh, enjoying this the course and you are also practicing the techniques that we are talking in this course so far right good good you are practicing and definitely you need to give the feedback that whatever the activities we talked about and when you apply them in your teaching do they work or not if they work fine supposing the activities that we do, we, we I mean talk about here if they do not work in your in your classes what what else can be done or how we can modify the activity what addition we can do in that activity so that our the purpose could be fulfilled our student would be able to communicate in the target language fine students clear so you know what did we talk about last week where did we end our lecture here it was we started reading skill fine and today we'll try to complete this skill right so we are these days we are talking about exploring skills exploring skills and we started with which skill listening skill remember that then we talked about speaking skill fine and then last week we started of course another receptive skill that is reading skill fine so let's start as per routine review first okay where are your notebooks okay keep your notebook with you and your your other items you need to have your your lead pencil because take notes while listening to lecture fine I know some of you at the back I can see that they don't have anything to write yes ask others those who are sitting beside you get borrow a pencil or a ballpoint you can ask girls they have their bags with them so they bring in for extra extra uh, pencils or ballpoints you can ask them if you don't have yes yeah I can see a student he has only one page no this is not the right way you need to have your notebook with you because this page I know once you will finish the class and you will throw it away you will make an aeroplan and you will throw it no this is not way fine so you need to I mean definitely once you come for, come for the class so you need to have the required things right take notes while listening to lectures uh, again I would say reading before the lecture and also reading after the lecture so post lecture reading and the pre lecture reading they really work I hope you understand yes yeah, so let's start now my dear students good now you are ready for the class fine and how is your morale how is your motivation are you motivated yes fine good because last week we were at the very critical point I mean we were all were I mean a move on but we had time constraint and we could not move on so today again with reading but before that what to do review all right because yeah unless we review the last lecture we cannot move forward so to move forward smoothly we need to yeah create a link with the last lecture so once you create this link then you in fact make your journey smooth you can move forward quickly because there's a speed breaker now you know speed breaker what do we call this speed breaker in, in Urdu do you know Uchalu you know that the speed breaker that we have sometimes in our roads we don't have that speed breakers but they may be called as card breakers in fact but they have go it's not a knock but I know they get those the speed breakers they don't break the speed but they break the cars fine so that that I mean once we create a length with the previous lecture so it helps you my dear students to have a rhythm for the next lecture so let's start so move on what is it here the review we talked about yes discussion on 
principles for teaching speaking now you know I am sure I am that sure all principles are on your tips fine first of all beware of what foreign language context and the second language context very simple second and what does it mean that you see while designing a course on speaking skill fine you need to keep in mind that where are you teaching the course who are your learners fine and is it a second language context or a foreign language context so second language context mean that ling that language that target language is being used that language of communication is there I gave you example of UK or you can I mean anywhere of course when the language is spoken and you, you go to America of course and you see some refugees go there some immigrants are there international students are there so over there they have to attend a course on second language learning right because there is the language of communication so foreign language where that language is not the language of communication like in our country we are learning this language why because this language is not language of communication our language of communication is konzi hai urdu lingua franca hamare mulk mein urdu hai in fact i hope you understand so that's why you need to know difference between what foreign language context and second language context is that clear well students so we talked about last week we talked about five principles so first one was i have just told you beware of the second language context or the foreign language context and then second point is that give students practice with both fluency and accuracy our students need to be fluent and accurate and again what can be can what, what can we do in for this situation we need to give equal importance to both the areas both fluency and accuracy we cannot give value to one area and we can ignore other so side by side we need to help students in both the fluency and accuracy so what can we do yes you might find it hard that initially we talked about that well i refer to some experts in fact the teachers also they feel that first let the student be fluent in the language so once they will achieve that fluency a certain level of fluency then you will see that they would be accurate as well if you start with accuracy right so then of course the student would not be confident to move on so i mean experiences that you see if you initially if you work on the fluency of the, of the student so they would be happy because you nobody is there to interact them nobody is there to cut them in they they keep on speaking and that gives them confidence so once they have the confidence they realize that they they can speak so then after some time you can work also on their accuracy and a time comes that well the student would be yes at home both in their speaking and i mean of course here correctness they would be accurate and fluent clear then we talked about that student provide student ample opportunities for speaking right enough opportunities are required because you know it, these are the skills and the skills need practice and the more you practice the better you would be right i mean it's a skill for example and uh, you know whatever if you you go to a mechanic and you see that how i mean how that person has become of course mechanic just he in fact he saw his ustad doing something and he tried to copy him and then later on he kept on doing it of course so after some times you see he becomes a mechanic and his skill every day when a new vehicle comes and he in fact fixes that vehicle so his skills improves in fact and if with every new vehicle in fact a new problem comes and of course he keeps on improving so a time comes that people of course trust that mechanic that ye ek acha ustad hai hum iske paas people go for for the for the mechanical work is that clear so that is what means that there are skills and skill need practice and practice continuous practice and of course once you practice more yeah you will find it 
easy in fact so therefore you need to give enough opportunities to the students so, I mean what can we do being a being a TEFL student being a TEFL teacher what can we do yeah you can make groups again you need to know how to make a good group in fact there are different kinds of groups sometimes we say that well a group in group all shining students would be there for a good competition and sometime in a group in fact one shining and other people who are weak so you can make a group of course I mean a mixed group could be there fine so there are different kinds of group can can be made again you have to see that that which kind of group can be done in your class you have to see the situation and then decide on my dear students you need to know your students of course for language classes particularly if you name the student if you call them by their first names again it it motivates the students in fact for big classes yes you you're right that it it, it it seems difficult however for small classes of course if you are your class is ideal for a language class particularly so you can you can you can name them in fact you can call them yes Ali stand up and what do you say Ali would be happy in fact or when you ask Salar you stand up right and answer my queries so he would be happy in fact I hope you understand so that's why being a good good uh, teacher a foreign language teacher you try to know the names of, of the students in fact you may forget once the class the session is over but in the class try to and it is not an impossible job you can do that every day you take attendance and you know their I mean faces and you know their names as well so it's good activity then again you see that of course maximize the class timings and it also means that give enough time to this the students talk in fact the students would be learning in fact they are there to learn you are there to help them out of course clear so the teacher of course the talk should not I mean in fact take students time fine so teacher should not talk, talk at the cost of the students time once is a time for the student yes they should be doing it and definitely you know that of course that, that, that every learning is self learning and once the student work in, a, in groups right and they work on different activities the task if there's a role play if there's a jigsaw activity fine so they, they keep on communicating and they enjoy as well and again if the teacher makes them busy again it's, it's useful for the teacher as well right when the students are working so teacher it's a time that he can relax fine because the students are working efficiently on different projects so again you was in the speaking what we talked about that we need to plan speaking skills activities that involve negotiations for meaning of course that it can be it can be in fact uh, of course a transactional talk it can be an interactional talk we can we can design and of course before I mean going to the class the teacher should know what to do which activity to be done of course and if he if he plans for the activity in advance he would be doing it well in the class otherwise if he thinks that I am an experienced teacher and I can I mean, think of an activity there and then in the class and sometime it creates problem yeah you, I mean, you cannot challenge experience my dear students yes experienced teachers are there but the point is that if you if you have a proper planning for a class so you manage that class well otherwise you know the students are the best judge they judge you either you are prepared or you are right off the cuff fine so definitely a good teacher always goes to his class well prepared fine so whenever you go for the class you need to have right if you don't have anything in writing for example something you should be there in fact but ideally you need to have proper lesson plan with you and once you go for the class and you also I mean once you have in black and white things with you you could easily manage them in the class fine so again we talk about some techniques you all remember that information gap activities one person has information other doesn't have so they use target language to share information very simple I gave examples also right so one is information giver other is information taker in so there is exchange of ideas exchange of notes fine so this is information cab then jigsaw activities 
yes jumbled up exercises are there stories in fact even sentences right you can in fact you have 10 to 15 sentences yes you can jumble them you can unscramble them and ask the students to put them in order you can give them sentences on what on piece of paper example there are 10 pieces and you ask them read and of course here coherence and cohesion of course people would be using that then tango sitting is there of course tango standing is there possible all simulations you simulate situations then we talked about well reading skill very important yeah what is reading by the way we had a discussion on that reading is which skill receptive or productive receptive skill okay fine what else in reading reading is for comprehension good good right and then right reading depends on what yes why do we read to get the message and how do we get the message from the text only no yes of course that we combine the text and the readers background knowledge clear right so we talked about as and then what is fluent reading a fluent reader is the one who can read at an average speed at an appropriate speed with advocate comprehension very good very good and then again there's a reading for we call it strategic reading. what is that to read the ability of a reader to read for achieving some specific purpose so again all that fine so reading is an activity of course right and at the end we saw of course an act of what yes that you recognize fine reading is a process my dear students that what is the process of recognition association and comprehension so first of all you recognize what do you recognize the script the letters then you associate those words with your understanding and then you are able to comprehend so reading is what is a process of recognition association and comprehension let's start in fact today on lecture on reading skills so practices what to do background to the teaching of reading what is the background it's a big area of course we talked about the background of speaking skill we talked about the background of what speaking right so teaching of speaking we talked about and we also talk about teaching of listening skill today we will talk about the background to the teaching of reading fine students ready for it all right so you know the reading is an important skill fine there is no in fact uh, uh, you cannot deny this it's a very very important skill why it is important because yeah reading is an input skill so reading prepares us for for, for example for our performance right reading gives us ideas reading gives us information so that we can manage our things well so reading is what a source of information and again reading is a source of experience for example experience is also transferred through reading reading is a source of knowledge is that clear reading itself of course is a reservoir of knowledge for example if somebody writes a book what he, what he does for example so he encapsulates right he writes his experiences in a book and definitely once we read what do we do yes we make use of that I hope you understand either it is a biography or it is an autobiography so once we read we try to improve for example history fine why do we read history in fact so that we know our past and again we read history to see that whatever we are enjoying or we are struggling why is it so what were right the root causes of these problems and then also I mean history tells you that well see we can forecast fine so the past the present and the future I hope you understand so reading is an important skill fine of course is important skill for language learning for language for learning a foreign language so again as a second language learning you can say it is an important skill again what is silent reading there's a debate on that one is silent reading and second is loud reading for example now silent reading when you are reading for example you are silent fine and then also there is loud reading 
again there is a debate on this that which reading is better still people feel that even silent reading works that there is no noise in, in, in your environment and you need concentration and you absorb and of course being a language teacher you see we generally say that well, loud reading is more important loud reading is more productive as compared to silent reading because once you read loud what happens you pronounce those words so it means you practice your articulators so once you practice those then when it comes to speaking so you can speak well if you are in the habit of reading silently then you may struggle when you have to communicate in that language I hope you understand so that's why this there are uh, advocates of the silent reading but also there are some people who oppose this reading for the for language learning particularly so loud reading works more than the silent reading in fact because definitely the, the language is vehicle of communication language for communication so if you want to communicate if you want to be communicatively strong so loud reading is works however for other purposes example if you want to I mean produce literature and you feel that you are very very experienced and of course you are very very fluent reader so then even silent reading you can do that but again when you, you, are, you are learning a language so we being careful the teachers we say we recommend that loud reading is is more important loud reading works more than the silent reading is that clear this is what I mean the perception is there now you can think for example on your own that that which reading works better for you does the silent reading works or the loud reading I hope you understand Clear students this one is what silent reading now of course in the background of the reading pro this uh, teaching reading again the reading processes right what are the reading processes my dear students so because we need to understand these processes of course so understanding the process of the reading has been the focus of much research over for the past 20, 1 to 125 years right so they, this you see this area of course is really important and people have been reading people have been researching on it for the last hundred years right so reading process models in fact there are three categories of this reading process models first one is bottom up model bottom see by see and then bottom up model simple right and second top down model fine and then third we can be interactive models right remember we talked about earlier yes you remember that so bottom up model from the bottom you go up what does it mean by the way yes so what is bottom up model yeah you start from the smaller components of the language right and you move for example the word level you see the words fine and that old example when you see a wall from the bottom what happens you can view I mean you can see minor details you can see the walls bricks you can count the bricks right then you can see what the quantity of concrete there you can see the quantity of cement there in fact and you can see symmetry of the wall so is the case here when you this approach is bottom up approach so approach with reading so you can see the words you can see the sentence pattern what sentence pattern of course you can see the phrase level you can see what morpheme level you can see the phoneme level in fact so that is what mean the bottom up model we call it I hope you understand very simple right so in, in what happens with model we go in depth we go in details my dear students right so while reading when the process is this bottom up model in fact bottom up approaches so what we do we, we go in details in fact we go at the word level in fact fine and then of course see other levels we keep in mind again there is an approach phonic approach for example now from the word phone phonic approach again people say that what experts also believe that the phonic approach to teaching reading 
Sports a bottom up model in fact. Now what is phonic approach? Like say cat, cat, right? So sounds, phones, mat, ma, a, ta, mat. Fine. So sat, a, ta, sat. See. So what is it? Once you what do you break up the sounds, right? So this is what I mean that once you have a word and you are struggling with the word you can break that words into sounds we call it what phonic approach see the teachers and researchers suggest that for readers need not break what is it the readers they feel that we can we can break those words into sounds well students so I was talking about this phonic approach that well we can break a word into its sounds individual sounds like I gave you examples then my dear students of course when a reader comes to unknown word right so he or she can sound out the word because of the knowledge of the individual units that make up the word right a new word example democracy 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 so into sounds fine aristocracy a uh, aristocracy I hope you understand so these are what mean watch watch right timetable time table see so that's why what you can do that phonic approach says you break that words not into that I mean you break the words right some people say that you see you need to see what is the prefix and what is the suffix and what is what the core root word but here I mean the phonic system says that you need to break that word into its sounds phonic is a method not the goal for teaching reading it's a method in fact right okay so my dear students of course we're talking about this the uh, bottom-up model one more important thing is that this another important of this important element of this bottom-up approach to reading is that the pedagogy recommends graded reader approach in fact what is it what does it mean that well a graded reader approach grading should be there in fact fine that of course once you grade up of course there well this much and this is the grade so teachers in fact they recommend an approach we call it a graded reader approach fine. you grade yourself in fact right there well for example you have read this paragraph in in say two minutes then you read again maybe you would read it in that one minute and 40 seconds so graded reader approach please read your book as well and then another point is that all reading materials is, is carefully reviewed so that students find it easy it's very important when you for example you want to inculcate this skill reading skill in your students so when you give them handout so the teacher must review that handout right why teacher should review to find out right that whatever the handout has been given right is it up to the level of the student or not isn't it hard for the student or the handout is for example you see whatever the, the level of the student is it is not up to their level of understanding sometime you give the handout and the students find it very easy right and they call it in fact or sometimes you give a handout and it is beyond their can beyond their capability so here again the teacher must review the handout so again not only the teacher should review teacher should in fact read the handout right before handing in a handout teacher must know what is it about because sometimes it happens that you see you give a handout to the students and you don't care that well that student read it and later you realize it it was hard or it was very easy and they have done it or they could not do it right so therefore my dear students you see need to be careful that when you give a handout please review it being a tough old student once you would be designing a course or you will be teaching this skill and you will be using handouts right so you need to and ideally you need to read that handout and only then you can sub give that handout to the students and that can be utilized well in the class otherwise if you I mean you have seen it for the first time you saw it somewhere you download it 
and you gave it to the class and you get it copied so so this is a problematic maybe maybe uh, in the class sometimes you struggle you could not manage it well why because you just saw it you saw that the title and you found you found the title impressive and you thought it would be i mean good activity for the class but once you start i mean uh, putting it in the practice you realize it was a failure right so therefore again the word planning is important before we design a handout i mean if you could write your own handout that is the best that is the best of course because you are the originator of that handout of course right so this is one that this reading material must be carefully reviewed so that student find it easy fine it should not be above their level or it should not be below their level baat samajh aa rahi hai yes students right so this is what we what i'm talking about their background to the teaching of reading good good fine so we talk about processes and we are throwing light on bottom up model fine students all right so move on here is an image for that have a look how is it right comprehension see bottom up right see from that you start from the smaller level and you move on you start from sentence level fine right and then you move on and then you see definitely this is inverted pyramid of course and you move on and your horizon increase but you start from the bottom that's why we call it bottom up approach for reading fine clear all right again in this way you have one intensive reading model is bottom up model and what is intensive reading by the way you know what intensive yes within this model this in fact approach of reading is used what is it the classroom what focus fo focuses on intensive reading what is it involves a short reading passage followed by textbook activities to develop comprehension and a particular reading skill first of all you, you need to comprehend and then a particular skill it can be scanning for example right or maybe a skill what see the point is that you this is what intensive reading that in for this involves what short reading passage followed by some activities fine why to develop comprehension of the students and a particular reading skill right particular reading skill of course so we call it intensively you read that you have extensive reading we will talk about later later on so in this bottom up model we have this approach we call it intensive reading which reading intensive reading what is it short reading passage followed by some activities and you read it intensively in fact only then you will be able to comprehend and then only then you will be able to yes of course know that particular skill that your teacher wants you to have clear all right so then now we have a while from now we talked about bottom up model now come down like talk about global view or gist of last talking about you remember that you see so is here in fact the top down model in fact here this is one is we go from bottom to up now here you come from top to bottom you are at the wall and you see down in fact and then only of course you can you can view something once you are at the top of a wall my dear students remember that what you can have you can have a view a global view fine all right so we call it top down model fine students what happens in this model you begin with the idea that comprehension resides in the reader where does comprehension reside in the reader i told you right reading combines what see the text and the reader's background knowledge so this is what we we start with this idea that the comprehension lives with the with the reader the readers background knowledge the readers schema the readers experience the readers information the readers reading again yeah some people readers reading some people are very fluent reader 
and whenever they see a handout quickly they finish it and some are they can some people comprehend text very well because again I mean if I give you an uh, example here if you select if you give an, uh, a text from organic chemistry and you give it to a student of MSc chemistry for example his comprehension of that text would be definitely strong quickly he would have a look and would read it and would comprehend also now the same handout if you give to a student right if you give that student that handout to a student of masters in English for example so that student would would find it hard to find because his background knowledge his schema is not as per the other student in fact so he would try hard to comprehend but he would definitely struggle however if you give an article from linguistics right sample transformative generative grammar you would give it to a, a linguistic student so he would easily read it and because his schema and right, his background knowledge would help him to to comprehend so my dear student this is what that in this top down model we began with this idea that comprehension resides in the reader fine clear all right so the reader uses background knowledge what does he do his background knowledge makes prediction and searches the text to confirm or reject the predictions that are made right so what does he do the reader what does he do he just tries to comprehend the reader in fact uses background knowledge one also he makes predictions and then he searches one the text to confirm or reject the prediction that are made fine students okay so a passage can be understood even if all of the individual words are not understood this is important what you, you, you might disagree with me how is it possible if I don't know some words how would I get the message so, and this is the problem with, with most of us where we struggle with the words and and ultimately we end with when nothing right in the in the last approach that was bottom-up approach so what that starts with the word word level in fact so if you find all difficult words you cannot make sense out of it right so that's why that, that is a limitation of, of this model here it says of course the statement says that even you don't know all the words still you make sense out of it still you can get the message out of it right it is not I mean hard and fast that you need to know each and every word to, to get the meaning in fact I hope you understand again the readers background knowledge the readers schema is important to get a message out of it. otherwise yes difficult fine so you may not know all the words sometime it happens that there's a word the key word is there in a sentence or in a paragraph and and the meaning revolves around that For example there is a terminology right and and the writer describes that terminology fine and initially the writer could not define it and the reader is unable to understand that so unless and until the reader knows that term I mean that description of the term may not help him to make his concept clear I hope you understand all right so in this approach the top-down model approach the teacher focuses on meaning generation activities rather than the mastery of word recognition it's important so you when you read my dear students and being teacher the TEFL student you make student help to generate meaning fine you help the student of course you design activity so that they would make something out of it fine so they would generate what meaning this is important the teacher of course the TEFL teacher TEFL student of course we try to what we focus on meaning generation activities rather than mastery of the word recognition because the student would be struggling in the word recognition so the meaning ultimately that is that that is the message that you have to get and if you struggle with the word and you could not get the message so that is off 
no use. Fine. No? Am I going fast? No, I am with you, my dear students. Shall I be slow? A bit slow? All right. Simply, we are talking about the common things. I talk about the models. Fine? Which models? Yes, we also call them processes of reading. First, bottom up. Simple. And that example of wall is very, very important. That, that holds water. Keep that in mind and you can easily do it. Now, from top to bottom. Simple, global view. Right? So in that way, what do we do? I told you things. That you may not know all the words, but still you can make, some, make sense out of, out of it. That is one. Or, second thing is, that you see, the teachers focus on meaning generation activities, rather than, what? Mastery of the words. Okay. Of course, the researcher Goodman, 1976. Achha admi hai. Goodman mean? Goodman hai uska naam hai. Right? Clear? So Goodman, translating, achha admi. Okay. So dear students, Goodman, kya kata hai? 1976. A strong, he is a strong advocate of top-down approach. But as, I mean, wo uska vakil hai bada iska. Right? Wo kalit karta hai iski, is method ki? Top-down model ki. And he criticizes He criticizes bottom-up approach. Q, why? By the way, what do you think? What do you think? Are you with top-down or bottom-up approach? Yes, what do you think? No idea? You are with bottom-up. We should know words. Okay, yes. Right, there is this approach in fact. But the top-down model talks about, top-down approach is talked about, meaning generation activities. The reader should be able to generate meanings. So, Goodman ki baaz thi. So, he criticizes this bottom-up approach. Well, he says, ke that model, right, just makes reader, fine, the reader becomes word caller. Simple word caller bante. Right? Who can read the words on the page but do not understand what they have read. Or ye badi, see, aap, is pe aap research kare te, ki kare aap ko to, you will find out that still most of the readers are like this. The simple word they are reading. You ask them what has been done with it, what has been comprehended with it, so they would be quiet. You research on that, you will feel. Yes, there are some readers of course, there are some fluent readers. So whenever they read, yes, they generate meaning out of it. I hope you understand. So this one is in fact mine, the top-down model. So Goodman criticizes that bottom-up approach. He says that that model makes reader just word callers. I hope you understand. All right. So move on with this top-down model, my dear students. What is it? A meaning-based approach. Like I said, what? That meaning generative activities. In the last slide, if I show you again, we talk about here that what? Here mean? We talk about? meaning generating activities fine so here we move on that is a meaning based approach to reading is supportive of top down models of reading because meanings is important that is the message fine and that message is not in the text that resides also in the background of the reader text combines fluency text of course reader Again, the act of reading. Fine? I told you four or five things. You remember that. So my dear students, you see this the reading based approach or we call it a meaning based approach. Right? To reading is supportive of top down model of reading. There are four features of this meaning based approaches. Four features. You need to know it. Four features. Pelibad. It is literature based approach. Uh, what is literature by the way? Literature of course reflection of life. Literature of course means the text of course. Right? So literature based approach, reading, uh, literate in fact. Na? Second is what? Whole language is student centered. Definitely of course when the writer writes so he writes for his readers in fact. Fine? So that is for the student center, for the learner centered. I hope you understand. Because it's a what? It's a meaning-based approach. So third thing is, 
रीडिंग इज इंटीग्रेटेड विद राइटिंग यस दिस दोनों स्किल्स क्या है लिटरेसी स्किल है we have to learn reading we have to learn writing also clear reading is input writing is output lekin ka aapas mein relation hai that's why it is said that good readers are good writers clear fourth feature hai emphasis on constructing meaning you construct meaning in fact so this is mean a meaning based approach ye in fact kiska support karti hai top down model ko so do you students extensive wahan kya tha intensive reading kis mein bottom up model mein in this model what is it extensive reading plays a key role in top down approaches to reading ab kya extensive reading means reading many books and extensive reading of course na bada extensive reader hai wo ki bahut padha hua usne theek hai well read hai in fact bahut padhta hai right so he reads lots of sources so we call it extensive reader i hope you understand so two approaches are there to find top down and then bottom up in fact again that's old example you are standing at the of course bottom of a wall and you see that you see up and then you are standing on the wall and you see down so definitely when you are standing at the wall so you see the view down for example right so that would be a global view of course but once you see from the bottom you have of course micro view you know microeconomics and macroeconomics yeah so here mean micro level understanding would be there once you start from the bottom once you start from the top macro level understanding would be there so you would have overall view right so meaning generative activities would be there i hope you understand so a meaning based approach and we discussed that sometimes it is not i mean hard and fast that you know every word and you know the meaning no you may not know all the words but still you can make sense out of it fine students clear are you with me all right good so we talk about top down model and bottom up models fine well intensive reading is in bottom up model and extensive in top down model here is third one इंटरेक्टिव मॉडल ऑफ रीडिंग इंटरेक्शन से वर्ड है इंटरेक्टिव सिंपल डेफिनेशन वेन वी कंबाइन बोथ टॉप डाउन एंड बॉटम अप सो वी कॉल इट वॉट सी दिस इज वॉट यू सी फ्रॉम द टॉप एंड ऑल्सो फ्रॉम द बॉटम दर इज द थर्ड मॉडल दैट इज इंटरेक्टिव मॉडल क्या कहते हैं बेहतर है सम ऑफ यू वर स्पोर्टिंग बॉटम अप सम ऑफ यू वर फॉर फॉर टॉप डाउन and again other hand in fact ha dono jo combine ho gaya in fact theek hai na aapko different approaches di one approach can well be which to start from the bottom ke we 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 need micro level understanding so yes and goodman usne usko criticize kiya he said well people reader become word callers only lekin phir top down ko usne appreciate kiya ke top down theek hai global hai but there is a third of course interactive models that this type combines elements of both bottom up and top down na model ye hota na aap do model ko mila ke aap wo naya model ek value addition hogi in fact you simply combined two models and now you are having a new model that is interactive model of reading kya kehte hain aap log how is it this in fact incorporates both the elements of bottom up and top down so students this was what we call it in fact that is the background to teaching of reading i hope you understand what is it background to teaching of reading in fact i hope you understand are you with me well students so these are the third model we call it what interactive models of reading so this model my dear students it combines both the elements of what element of top down approach and bottom up model now let's move on to see principles for teaching reading and what are the principles for teaching reading so there are five, four principles are there the first one is exploit the reader's background knowledge it's very important and you remember that while defining reading we discussed that it is the meaning resides in the reader as well fine so the text the reader the fluency the comprehension all these elements make this act of a reading so that's why 
All right. So that's why you see we have to. I mean, when the first principle is that we need to utilize the reader's background knowledge, right? That is the one principle we should know because once you design a course for your students being instructor on, on, on this course, so you need to consider the reader's background, right? That what is the background of the reader and accordingly you can, you can select your handouts, accordingly you can design your activities. If your reader is the business graduate, if your reader is a literature background, if your leader has engineering background, so accordingly mean you can uh, make your activities. Build a strong vocabulary base. Yes, very important of course. And how you make, again it depends on you of course, you make your readers read, right? And I mean, should we give you I mean, list of vocabulary items? Again, you see that we talk about the, and the grammar translation method. Vocabulary is important, of course. But how to decide, of course, and how to give the vocabulary, it depends on the teacher, in fact, that how he helps the students, in fact, how he motivates students to have this grip on vocabulary. Vocabulary is important because definitely when you write, you need words, of course. It is said that if you want to retain a word, you need to use a word, of course. So, I mean, we cannot say no to vocabulary. Vocabulary is important. So, the point is that how you get and how you read. Again, if you are a meaningful reader, if you are an active reader, so you can get a word, of course, and, do, and you use a word in your writing and use a word if you can use it conveniently in your speaking. So, that word becomes you see you're part of your vocabulary and then teach for comprehension again it's important another principle of course is for teaching that comprehension reading is for comprehension again I mean meaning generative activity that you have to generate a meaning if a reader fails to get a meaning so that's of no use clear so teach the reading that is it it is a meaning generating activity your learner would be able to generate meaning out of that. Another principle is that work on increasing reading rate. Yes, important because fluent reading, we talk about that fluent reader is the one who can read at an appropriate speed with an advocate comprehension. So that's why you need to work on the reader of course in day one, then after a week you can review it and then keep on reviewing that on particular this what reading rate that what is the rate of the re reader is it improving if you feel that reader is improving his rate of reading it means that he is putting efforts and he is improving his reading and also he is comprehending things now another principle of course if you move on that teach reading strategies fine what are the reading strategies for example you can skim you can scan Right, tell them how to skim, tell them how to scan in fact. Fine, so this is what you need to tell them. Right? What are the reading state? what is thorough reading for example. Fine, so reading for specific information. Right, or what is fast reading? Your reader need to know it. Encourage readers to transform strategies into skills. This is very important. That of course, once there is a strategy, initially for example, I mean, getting a meaning from the context. Maybe it's a strategy. But once your reader, in fact, uses it continuously, so it becomes a skill. I hope you understand. So, encourage readers to transform their strategies into skills. Initially, when you tell your reader that this is way how, how you can skim. So, initially, it's a strategy, my dear students. So, after some time, what would happen? This strategy would become its skill right and then build assessment and evaluation into your reading it's very important you should have a rubric for it an evaluation criterion for it right that if the student in fact is if at this level this should be the scale so you need to have a fine so build that evaluation criteria strive for the continuous improvement as a reading teacher yes important you need to set examples. The teacher, in fact, he should be example. And the students copy the teacher, of course. If the, if the teacher expects from the students that they need to read, and if the teacher is not reading, again, you see that that will not have more effect. 
so start from yourself again think of your reading habits right and how have you developed it and unfortunately if you could not develop it then start it now of course you are the reading teachers now fine so start from yourself be a reading teacher if you want right be a reading student if you want to teach reading again I would refer to Kyle Jensen a professor in UNT he says that whatever activity you give to your students first do it yourself and see how hard it is and then you would realize the students problems I hope you understand these are some of the principles that you need to keep in mind now the classroom activities very simple active word you know active a c t i v e active what is active my dear students activate prior knowledge again whatever the students have assume knowledge what do they already know you can talk about them for example your your text is on for example what computer and ask them what do they know about computer or it is on telecom engineering for example ask them what do you know about these right so activate their prior knowledge with a then what C for cultivate vocabulary of course right so okay I mean that is of course means relevant vocabulary need to be cultivated then C teach for comprehension teach for comprehension simple then increase reading rate simple verify reading strategies of course right what strategies and the student need to know different strategies for reading and then they need to skim and when to skim in fact either they need to uh, scan when to scan and how to scan right give the activities to the students so that they would know it and help them transform these strategies into their skills evaluate of course the progress important that once you see that readers are pro progressing there should be an evaluation criteria this would definitely help them in fact so dear student this is in fact today's our lecture writing skill we will start in our le next lecture simply you need to know what is writing what is writing my dear students it's a both a physical and mental act I hope you understand both physical and mental act at the basic level it is what it is the physical act of committing words to some medium whether it is an email composing or penning down of ideas on the other hand writing is what is a mental work of inventing ideas thinking about how to express them organizing them into statements and paragraphs it's both its purpose is both to express and impress it is both a product and a process so we have time constraint so this is what now at the end I want to give you a summary of today's lecture my dear students so today we talked about background to teaching of reading skills I gave you the background fine then we talk about importance of reading skill and we talk about what is silent reading and then we had a debate on that then we talk about teaching reading models bottom up top down interactive then we talk about principles for reading I mean for teaching reading then we talk about the activities in the class and that word active is there then briefly we start what is writing skills we will start this I mean we will review writing again in the next lecture because writing is an important skill with this I say laugh is to you see you in the next class it's goodbye